G'day YouTube, welcome to part two of my 2G base station tutorial series. Recapping what we did in part one, the hardware and software requirements were detailed and we configured all the software tools in preparation for the deployment of our GSM base transceiver station. In part two today, I'll be showing my viewers a practical demonstration of Yate BTS running with a soft Blade RF software defined radio. And we're gonna connect two smartphones to it and try out some of the cool features that this software provides. So without further delay, let's get on with the tutorial, shall we? So I'll begin by setting the scene hardware wise now. We're going to make sure that our PC is powered on and logged into Dragon OS Focal X, like you can see here. Secondly, we're going to attach one of our cellular antennas to the RX1 port on our Blade RF. And we're going to attach the second antenna to the TX1 port on the Blade RF. Thirdly, we will plug the included USB cable into the Blade RF and subsequently into our PC. Next, we will make sure that our SIM cards are inserted into our mobile phones in our lab environment. And we'll switch them on and ensure that they are both in flight mode. And to confirm that our Blade RF is properly connected to the PC and the driver modules have been loaded successfully, we'll just run this command. And we can see here that Soapy SDR is reporting that our Blade RF is ready to go. And to get started with Yate BTS, all we need to do is run the following command, and this will initialize the 2G base station. And I hit enter on that. So before we switch off flight mode and connect both of our smartphones to the base station, I'll just take a moment to say that while SDR cellular base stations are amazing technology, they're not perfect and they do need a moment to just catch up and settle down a bit. So for example, if you start doing things too quickly, like turning your phones off flight mode and trying to send SMSs and making calls, um, you'll probably find that Gate BTS won't like that very much and you might experience weird, strange behavior. So while we're waiting for Yate BTS to set everything up, I just have to tell you guys that I have had to make a minor last minute change to my lab environment. I believe in part one, I said that I had a Samsung S8 and an S9. I had to remove the S8 from the lab setup because it's got a damaged USB-C port and it can't establish a data connection. So, um, Everything else remains the same. So I'm going to be using my personal Google Pixel 7a. So I'll have to, I'll, don't be surprised if certain personal details are blurred out. Okay, so I'm going to bring my two phones into the video now. So I'm just using an application called SCR CPY screen copy. And, and both of these phones are just connected to my PC. And so we can have like a full remote desktop with we can control it with the mouse and everything. So that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to turn the first mobile phone off of flight mode. And we can see down here that it has immediately attached to the base station. So yeah, that's really cool. And after a short amount of time, we should probably see a welcome SMS come through, hopefully. And just as expected, here is our welcome message. So we can actually click on that. And we can see that Yate BTS has provided us with a phone number and it's telling us to call David. So I'll explain what David is later. So we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same for our second mobile phone. So this is my Google Pixel personal phone. I'm going to press flight mode off. 
And then we're just, again, like I said, we're just going to give Yate BTS just a second to settle down. Otherwise, if you start doing stuff too fast, it, it doesn't like it very much. So hopefully after a short amount of time, we also get a welcome SMS on this telephone. And just as expected, we have another SMS on the second phone detailing our phone number and telling us to call David. So, so far, so good. That's really cool. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you guys the features of Yate BTS. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is phone calls. Yate BTS has fully featured phone calls, um, which is, yeah, really, really nice feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute my microphone and then I'm going to actually talk to you guys through the phone call. So fingers crossed this little live demonstration goes well. So on my Google Pixel, I'm going to call the Samsung S9 over here. So I'm going to go into the calling application. So I'm just going to do a search for Galaxy S9. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to proceed to start the phone call now. So I'm going to mute my microphone briefly. Okay. I think you guys might be able to hear me now. So this is me speaking through the Google Pixel with a real phone voice phone call made between the two mobile phones in our lab environment with the 8 BTS. So yeah, that's really, really cool. I'm running the 8 BTS on a dual CPU Intel Xeon server, and the phone calls appear to be extremely stable with this amount of computing power. So yeah, that's that's really, really cool. So I'm going to proceed and hang up the call now because I think we've sufficiently demonstrated that. So give me two seconds and I'll revert back to the other microphone. Okay, so yeah, that was a very, very cool demonstration of phone calls. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to send some SMS messages between the two phones. So these, both of these phones have, with when they're connected to a Yate BTS base station, they have full SMS capability. So they don't have MMS, it's just SMS. So yeah, still very, very cool feature. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to probably use the S9 from now on so I don't have to block out so much personal information on my Google Pixel here. So I'm going to go into the messaging app. I'm going to compose an email and I'm going to send it to the, I believe I called it Pixel, I think. Yeah, Pixel 7a. So I've got the phone number of these phones already saved just to make the video a bit quicker. And I'm going to write, I'm going to just write something very brief here. And then I'm going to send the message to this phone here. So yeah, this is really straightforward to do. Everyone, everybody knows how to send a, a text message, don't we? And as we can see here, we've got the notification that the text message came through. And I'm going to reply to that just to prove that the SMS messaging is bi-directional. I'm um, actually using the mouse to control these phones because I'm, I'm too scared about bumping the USB cables and I'll have to restart screen copy. So it's a bit slower using the mouse, I know guys, but... And then we have it, we've got bi-directional SMS messaging. So 
just a reminder, you guys, this isn't going through the regular telephone network in my country. This is a BT, a base station running on my premises in my lab environment. So, yeah, it's amazing technology. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is demonstrate GPRS data. So, GPRS, for all you youngins out there that don't remember the days of 2G, I'm an old guy, so I remember 2G and used 2G extensively back when I was a lot younger. And yeah, it, GPRS is insanely slow. However, just as a demonstration, we're going to test it out. So, so what I'm gonna do is, again, we're probably just gonna use the S9 again. Um, I'm going to return to the desktop on the phone and I'm going to enable GPRS data connection. And as we can see immediately, we have the G logo and then the upload and download arrows there signifying that our phone is communicating so yeah that's really really cool um now as i said before gprs is insanely slow so i highly if you want to play around with gprs i highly recommend getting the opera browser um because yeah that's got lots of optimizations for low bandwidth connections and stuff like that so Just have to wait to set up the application okay so you're not gonna you're not gonna visit facebook or youtube or anything like that you if you're lucky you might be able to visit the google homepage. all right let's try something else i'm going to maybe we'll just do a google search for my youtube channel and see what happens and if this doesn't work guys i'm just going to move on to the next thing We do have a connection though, because we can see, oh, here we go. It actually loaded, that's amazing. Okay. And yeah, let's see if we can actually get my channel to come up. There we have it. That is that is uh, a Google search for my YouTube channel over 2G GPRS, which is, yeah, that's amazing. Really, really cool feature. Okay, so that's pretty much the three big things, like the three main features that most of my viewers are probably interested in. There's two other minor features, which I'll show you guys. Um, I left them to the end because they're not that cool. But, I mean, I, don't, I mean to say it is cool technology, but no one really cares about this kind of stuff in my opinion. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the welcome message and explain to you guys what exactly David is. So David is a interactive voice response. So IVR. So, you know, when you call up a bank and it will say, you know, press, press one to transfer money, press two to speak to an operator. So that's an IVR, right? And Yate BTS actually has an inbuilt IVR. So what I'm going to do is we're going to route phone audio back through the recording now so i what i'll do i mean and yeah you, you can dial this number if you want i'll leave that up on the screen briefly so you guys can transcribe that but i should have it saved in my contacts hi this is david burgess founder of the OpenBTS project. You've just installed Yate BTS. Congratulations. Press 1 for an echo test. Press 2 for the conference room. This is an echo test. Anything you say will be echoed back. Okay, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So it's got two options. So the first option is like an echo test. So you can speak into like speak into your phone during the phone call and it will just repeat back to you what you said. So it's good for testing, I guess, audio levels or something like that. And the second option is um, a conference room. So if you've got multiple phones connected to your base station, you can all dial the David IVR and press two on the keypad and then um, if you've got three, you could three people could all talk to each other. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And 
The next thing I'm going to show you guys is the, yeah, it's the, it's the final minor feature that I'm going to demonstrate for you guys. So there's a chat bot called Eliza, which is part of the Yate BTS software suite. So what I'm going to do, so yeah, it's a chat bot. So it's accessible by SMS messaging. So you can send a number similar to, oh, sorry, you could SMS a number similar to the David number, for example. And you'll actually get a response from a chat bot. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that quickly. So I'm going to return back to my messaging app on the Samsung S9. I'm going to author a new SMS message and I should have the number saved here already. And I'll leave that up on the screen. Or I guess, hang on. So I'll leave that up on the screen briefly so you guys can just transcribe that. That should be long enough. And then I'm just going to write hello. Whoops. And I'm going to send that. And there we have it. We have a reply from the chat bot called Eliza. So yeah, you can, you can, it's interactive. So you can, you can keep talking to it. Um, it's not very intelligent. Like you're not talking to chat GPT or anything like that. So yeah, don't, don't expect any too deep and meaningful conversations to occur from this thing. And that is a remarkably weird thing it just sent back to me. That is, yeah, okay. All right, we're going to move on. That's just weird. <laughs> Funny, but weird. So yeah, both of those features, so the, the echo test, the echo test and the Eliza are really good ways of testing out Yate BTS if you don't have two handsets. If you only got one handset, you can use the echo test to test the call and, and you can... Um, use Eliza to test SMS messaging. So you don't really need two phones. It's just two phones is better. So, so yeah, pretty much that will conclude um, part two today. So thanks for sticking around this long if you're still here. To quit Yate BTS, you can simply send it the control C keyboard combination, or you can just close the terminal window completely. So, um, yeah, so I recommend um, placing your mobile phones into flight mode too before you power them off. I, I always turn off mobile data and put them both into uh, flight mode. So that's just when you fire up your base station next time, your phones aren't there ready to be too quick and attach to the base station when Yate BTS is still settling down. So yeah, that's a that's, um, very, very cool demonstration, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Stay tuned for part three, where I'll be covering the topic of using Gate BTS as an IMSI catcher. I'll also show you guys how to tap the data like flowing across the base station. And I'll also be talking about like troubleshooting some common issues. And lastly, I will we'll be talking about some practical naughty applications of Gate BTS and, and a Blade RF. So yeah, that should, um, yeah, that'll do it for this video. So thanks very much for watching guys. Catch you later.